So just to restate, uh, a previous question was, what type of topics do you really need to know or be familiar with to do well in the simulations? And I mentioned that there were sort of four topics to be aware of for that. Your routing protocols like EIGRP and OSPF, your and RIP, that's another one, RIP, so that make five topics, as well as your access lists, know your access lists, as well as spanning tree from a land switching perspective. What is the minimum passing score or the minimum mark? So a perfect score is considered 1,000. So 1,000 points is a perfect score. And uh, when I took, the last time I took the exam, which was just a couple of months ago, you need to get 810 or greater to pass. So 810 out of 1,000. Uh, so that's what I've seen as far as that's concerned. So another thing I want to talk about is some study techniques, you know, things you can do to prepare yourself for this. So we've already known uh, that watching videos, right, our INE CCNA videos are a great resource for that. And just to give you a little bit of heads up on that, if I go to our website right here, streaming.ine.com, and bring that up, and then click on Cisco, And then from Cisco, click on CCNA, and we're all we're dealing with the routing and switching exam right now. So some resources I want to show you here. First of all, as far as videos are concerned, uh, last year in 2016, the CCNA exam was updated to what they call the CCNA version three. So in the videos right here, you're going to want to do the. Uh, uh, let's see here. So these ones here on the top are the most relevant uh, video. So right here, so the 200-125, the 200-105. So this is the CCNA version 3 ICND2 videos, uh, about 23 and a half hours of that. This is the CCNA version 3 ICND1 videos, about 22 hours of that. And all these videos together are right here, the CCA 200-125. So this 125, this isn't anything new. This is just a compilation of this video series and this video series. Okay, so it's, it's your choice. Uh, some of these other videos right here, for example, um, down here, CCNE Routing and Switching Boot Camp and uh, CCNE Routing and Switching Technologies. So these ones right here are older videos. These were taken before the exam was upgraded to the version 3 exam. They're still very useful. Um, many of the topics, I'd say probably 80% of the topics in the older exams are still carried over into the newer exams. Uh, so you might you know, in the newer exams, for example, in the ICND2, you might see me talk about OSPF. And then you might just want to check out how I talked about OSPF back here in this video series. Because I give different examples, I'd give different whiteboarding examples, and uh, it just might help, you know, hone in that knowledge a little bit more. In addition to watching those videos, uh, we've got some online practice exams. So let me click on that for a second. So I'll click on the ICND1 practice exam. Just getting, this, you can see here it keeps a record of your most recent attempts. Okay, so begin practice exam attempt. So I tried to design these to be as close to the experience you would have when taking the actual CCNA exam as possible. So for example, you'll see you'll get 60 questions, multiple choice questions. Now there are not any simulations in here. Our exam engine does not currently have the ability to do simulation-based questions, but everything else uh, you can pretty much find in here. So you'll see here, if you look up in the upper left corner, this is a timed exam because that's what you're going to experience. You'll have about 90 minutes, so you'll have roughly 90 minutes to do this. It shows you your progress. I'm currently at one question out of 59. 
And they'll say, select the best answer. I'll just select one just randomly. Select the best answer. Okay, I'm just randomly selecting stuff. Select the best answer. If there's more than one answer, it'll tell you that. So far, these are all just multiple choice single answers. Let's see if we can get to one that's multiple choice multiple answer. I know there are some in here. And these are presented in a, in a random order. There's the whole, the question pool is large enough that if you take this exam over and over and over again, which you can do, there's no limit to the quantity of times you can do it, you should get a fairly different exam pool each time you take it. It looks like, okay, select two answers. So I'll just do that one and that one. Now let's say I was going through this and I said, you know what? I'm at 17 questions out of 59, I'm done. You know, my lunch break is over, I want to finish. So you could, you know, halfway in, into it, you could just click on end and submit for grading right here. Submit for grading. And it'll show you. All these ones that have got X's here are ones that you got wrong. So you can click on that. It says, okay, this is what you selected. This was the correct answer. Back to exam results. And it'll show you the ones that you got right. So you can see we've got, uh, like I mentioned, we have uh, an online practice exam for the ICND-1 as well as for the ICND-2, Cisco, CCNA, routing and switching, ICND-1 practice exam, ICND, uh, and this is the ICND-2 practice exam. We also have an older practice exam. This is from the older test, which, like I said, still I think is a, is a great tool just to test yourself and get prepared. If you look at the CCA version 3 blueprints and then compare them against this older test right here, you'll know as you're going through this test, for example, the CCA version 3 no longer has any questions on frame relay. Well, as I'm taking this practice exam right here, if I get a frame relay question, just skip it. But you'll say, okay, this question is not in the blueprint. I don't have to answer it. But these newer ones right here should be completely relevant to the current CCNA version 3 exams. So that's one thing. Uh, let's see here. There are some questions here. So someone's asking uh, a very common question. Uh, you know, how much depth do I have to cover in these topics? Uh, and this learner is putting out some topics like, you know, uh, firewalls, access points, wireless controllers, uh, virtual services, basic virtual network infrastructure. Once again, to answer the question of how much depth do I actually need, I would go back to the official certification guidebooks. Um, that stuff you're referring to is probably in the ICND2 exam book. So if I go to my queue, And look in here for the ICND-2 exam certification guide. Basically, I would just find that in the table of contents and find the chapter dealing with those topics. I don't want to take a lot of time here looking for that, but that's, that's the path I would take. I would go to the certification guidebook, find the topic in there, maybe look in the appendix, and then go right to that chapter and see how much depth they cover in the book. Okay, so I talked about watching the videos. I talked about doing the online practice exams. I mentioned you will want to supplement that with reading. Another thing that I very strongly recommend that people do is to make use of flashcards. You know, books and videos are great when you're in front of your tablet or when you're in front of your laptop, but what about when you're at the restaurant? What about when you're you know, see, sitting in the passenger seat of a car and someone's driving you an hour or two or three or something. You know, what about when you're in a place where you don't have internet access or it's just not feasible? Flashcards are a great, great way to take advantage of that. Um, you know, back when I was preparing for my CCIE exam many, many, many years ago, I created about this thick a set of flashcards. I got little three by five note cards, several packs of them. And as I was studying, as I was watching a video or reading a book, I would pause and I'd say, okay, I can make a question on that. And so I'd write on the front of a flashcard, what is the TCP port numbers for FTP? 
and on the back of the flashcard, I'd write 20 and 21. And so I would create these questions and answers for myself that I could just test myself on when I was in situations I did not have internet access. Another great reason that flashcards are useful is you can get other people involved with you. For example, your spouse, your son, your mom, your friend, you could say, hey, would you mind testing me for a second? I'm preparing for this, this uh, certification exam. It's gonna make me very rich and famous. I'll drag you along with me. I'll get you a mansion, but you gotta help me out here. You gotta test me with these flashcards. And they'll say, oh, well, of course, I'd love to do that. So just hand them your flashcards. And they'll, you know, people love to test you, right? They love to see you fail and make you embarrassed. And you know, you can prevent that by showing them how, how smart you are. So flashcards are a great thing you can hand out to other people to have to, you know, engage them in your learning process. Another thing, uh, now there are also online forms of flashcards. For example, this is a website that I've used right here called Study Blue. Perfectly free, you don't have to pay anything, and you can create flashcards for yourself on here. So for example, you know, once you log into this, and like I said, it's absolutely free, you can click on Make Cards, and then you just type in, you know, what is your name? And you can type in, Bobby Sue, or you know, whatever your name is, then click plus to do another flashcard. And then as you're doing your flashcards, you save and exit. I don't care to save that one. But for example, uh, let's see here, how do I get out to my, I don't want to save this. Uh, there's got to be a way to show to get to my previous flashcards that I've created. Delete cards, yes, delete. Okay, so for example, um, I've been just starting out trying to learn Python. I'm just like, I always thought Python scripting looked kind of cool. I've always been intimidated by it. And I thought, you know what? It's time to buckle up and try to learn this thing. So as part of this, I started using this tool here to create flashcards for myself. And as I create these flashcards, I can click on study now you know, I'm going to study, you know, how many cards, five cards, 10 cards, all of my cards in a random order. And I'm just going to do study now. And it shows the flashcard. And I can say, okay, I think the answer to this is blah, blah, blah. Oh, great. I got it right. Hit the green up arrow. Okay. I think the answer to this is blah, blah, blah. Oh, I got that wrong. Okay. Down. And so once you do finish studying, you can see how many you got right, how many got wrong. And it, and it tracks all this. And then you can go back and you can say, for example, okay, I only want to study the cards I got wrong, or I want to study everything. So as opposed to actually making flashcards with real, you know, paper-based flashcards, if you have online access, I think this is a great tool. And this isn't the only one. Study Blue is just one that I came across, which was free and, and I like it. Um, but I definitely recommend somehow using flashcards as part of your studying process.